hi Ivy. Hi Jenna. <laughs> so this week, or for this lesson, what we're going to do, um, seeing that you've excelled at um, spinning greasy fleece, um, we're going to move on to look at that washed fleece that we did last week and to see how we would proceed to spin with that. Mm -hmm. And we're also going to try some wool top, which is another form of fibre that's actually been commercially prepared. Um, it isn't actually commercially prepared for spinners, it's actually part of the knitting yarn process. Um, and it's just that spinners have sort of snatched wool top um, away uh, before it gets spun into yarn and we've you know come to love it as, as a form of fibre for us to spin. So we'll be talking about that as well. So the first thing I think what we'll do is to have a look at your pieces yep. that you've um, brought back to show me from your week of practice and we'll also show everybody the, um, the washed fleece as well. So we had that, um, whoops, <laughs> we had that um, uh, excerpt from the video where we washed um, Ivy's yarn and um, we left it at that, we washed it over there at the kitchen sink, but this is actually the yarn dried and um, Ivy's just wound it into a small ball. <laughs> but the other thing that um, Ivy has done is also knitted her yarn into a swatch. And so a beginner's yarn knitted into a swatch. What size needles did you use, Ivy? Uh, I think it was a six. Yeah, looks yeah. like that, yeah. And, and you can see the texture of that, it's just beautiful. And there's a lot more like puffy bits on the back as well. Yeah, yeah, the garter side mm. tends to uh, let that uh, show a bit more. But that is such an acceptable piece of knitting. I love the texture. Yeah, and there's so much fun. evenness in there. Because when you look at a beginner's yarn, sometimes you can get a bit disheartened. And I always say, once you knit it up, you'll be amazed at what you actually get yeah my that. one's very like not very even but it all works when you knit it it does yeah it, it, the knitting itself evens yeah. it out and you brought a little bit back on a bobbin that yes. you've been doing this week or this last week this one is so much more even than it my is, last one it is isn't it oh yes we can see that yes on the on the video oh yes that is amazing and that's just two weeks isn't it yeah two weeks and you're already spinning a very acceptable even yarn and it really I spinning it thinner is a lot easier I'm finding because I thought it had to be thick to make a thick wool but this one will make still quite a thick wool yes Yes, it will. And is that your aim, to make a thicker wool? You like um, that idea? I feel like that's easier to knit. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather knit something thicker. Okay. Terrific. Lovely. So, now we're going to... I'm going to show you a, a, a simple method of washing fleece. And um, I've got this lovely big pot, which was my grandmother's, that I always wash small quantities of fleece. There is another way of washing or, or processing in bulk, which I tend to do, which is called fermenting fleece. And I will have given you notes on that. And there are some YouTube videos showing you that method. But for this method, you bring your water up to 80 degrees centigrade. 80 degrees centigrade is sort of a magic number for not only washing fleece, but also, and it's 80 now, also for dyeing. It's the part, you see, it's actually just gone over the 80 and already the bubbles are starting to form. 80 is just at that point. No, it's not too bad, it's 81, 82. Um, 80 is just at that point where there is no activity in the water. And that's what you want. As soon as you start to get bubbles and activity in the water, 
that is when there's a likelihood that you will felt your fleece. So this is some of the fleece that um, I want to wash. Um, it's, you know, um, just in the clump as it's pulled out from the whole fleece. And I'm going to pop it into one of these lovely large uh, laundry bags that they use for the lingerie, but I tend to get the big ones. Um, I get them from the Daiso store, you know, that Japanese store that sells everything for $2 and something. And um, you want to have a secure zip, and this enables you to pull your fleece out of the water. Um, now, the other piece of sophisticated equipment is a plunger. And plungers are great for uh, pushing the water through the fleece. And once again, trusty Dawn from Costco. And if you say I've probably got um, oh, five litres of water, six litres of water in here, I'm actually putting in about 25 mils of um, the detergent in there. So we'll give the detergent a good stir around and we're just basically going to push the fleece into the water. You can instantly see that the dirt is coming off <laughs> and the water is going milky. And I'm just pushing the fleece this is a small quantity that I'm doing here. I probably would wash about 200 grams at a time, this method. What I like about this method is in winter, I can do a small amount each night, 200 grams. And I do it last thing at night. And then I basically go to bed and the water cools off overnight and in the morning I basically pull the fleece out of the water with the dit with the bag and um, squeeze it out and I just put I just put it in a bucket outside and then what I do is I will wash the whole fleece over a week 200 grams each night and they just stay outside damp for the week in a bucket uh, once they're cooled off. And then at the end of the week, I have an outdoor washing machine and I uh, will fill that up with hot water and I'll give the fleece two rinses and spins. And that's my fleece washed. And it hasn't been a whole hoo-ha trying to get it done you can do 200 grams at a time now i'm just giving it an extra couple of little pumps here because you notice the tips on this were quite dirty and you can see there some of the dirt remaining on the tips you'd be amazed though that um once it's sat in the detergent overnight, those tips become quite um, soft and malleable and a little bit greasy feeling. And so when you then come to rinse your fleece in very hot water, those tips will loosen up and will, it'll be easy to uh, remove any last minute dirt that there might be or residual dirt that there might be. But look how white that fleece has already become. And there's no, that, that, that will not have felt it even though I've been plunging it. But I'm just going to leave it now. And pretend that it's um, just going to cool overnight. Lovely. So um, last time, of course, we washed um, our fleece. Um, it, over in the pot on the stove, we got our water up to an, a nice 80 degrees and I had it in that laundry bag and we used a very sophisticated piece of equipment called the sink plunger 
and I've let rinsed that wool since or that fleece since and let it dry and this is the outcome so let's have a look at this because people say to me so how would I spin that and so if we take into consideration what you've learned so far you've learned to spin from the lock so you can still see there are some grubby tips here and that's okay They're, those tips will open up very nicely once we start to process it so you could still separate the tips out if you wanted to here's another tip um, and you could go through the even the washed fleece and separate out the tips and get a nice little group of locks ready for spinning that way um, so if we did that if we wanted to then spin these locks that one's a little short but that's okay um, we could also just flick out the tips but sometimes the actual cut end of a washed lock will slightly felt. It's because it's a freshly cut end and the freshly cut wool tends to felt a little bit more. So I find if I am going to spin from the lock like this, I will flick open that end, but I will also just take a moment to very quickly flick open this end as well. And then you can still um, spin from the lock that way. Um, you can at this point with having um, washed fleece um, process, process it with some other forms of equipment and one of them are hand carders. So I have a set of hand carders here hand carders come in all shapes and sizes really but the principle is always the same they have a handle and they have a larger area of times than a flicker these hand carders are slightly curved some of them are completely flat um, each carder really works on the same principle so if we were going to card this wool what we would do is take the tips and lay them down onto the carders like this you just push push them onto the times gently um, and we can then basically i'll just pull a few more out and don't overload your your carders less is more so to speak I'll just put that in there and maybe one find one more where are we? oh here we go put that in there and then you just hold on to your carder like this resting it on your knee don't work up in the air because you'll end up um, hurting yourself and I hold my carder like this with the, my three fingers round there and then my two car, uh, hands on the top. And you're just basically slowly taking uh, this carder across the top of the other one. Now notice here there are long pieces of fibre extending beyond the carder. You don't want those to bend back on themselves so make sure when you come back for the second uh, go through that you you're not bending those back you can hear the times just gently drawing past each other and I'll just make sure I cap there we go so we've got a little part here that's not opened up particularly well we can put that back on that one and we'll take one more pass through so what I'm looking for is openness of fiber. Now I'm getting that on both sides really. That's all you want from your carder. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to just lift my fibers off and I might give them another go. So I'll just 
once again they're opening up beautifully now just take the card as past each other do another pass you can see i'm making sure that those top fibers don't bend back on themselves and there we go look both cards has really opened up beautifully so i'll just take this lift it up with my left hand and then i'm going to actually place it against my right hand and lift it up with my right hand what i've then got is i've got opened up fiber that i can actually roll into what we call a little roll leg and so i'm just going to roll that fiber up that one's not quite opened up there but that's all right and we can then roll that like that so what we've got is a beautifully opened up we've got a little unopened part there but we can just put that aside we've got a nicely opened up roll lag of fiber ready to spin a very different preparation than what we've spun so far this will give us quite a fluffy yarn because all the fibers are crisscrossed and in almost like a, a whirlwind vortex running through and of course fibers want to straighten out so when we spin this into a single it will and we then eventually ply it the yarn will puff out quite considerably but that's one way that you can process your washed fiber so just one other thing that you can do with your hand cards, which is just lovely. And Mishka is so obsessed with your feet. <laughs> yep, back you go, Mishka. Um, so what, another process that you can do with your hand card is, is to blend in some beautiful um, exotic fibres. And this one is camel, which is so soft. Um, if you notice, I have um, carded uh, this this is the border Leicester washed fleece if you notice there's a little dot of fiber there I'm just going to pull that out and have a look because yep sure enough what it is is a little second cut so it just it's not good to be part of the um, bat so we'll take that out because the rest of the fiber has opened up beautifully so what we can actually do now is to blend in a nice little bit of camel and we do that very gently just by stroking it down onto the tines like that not a lot it's just almost like a little bit of salt and pepper on the surface so now what we're going to do is to slowly draw our carders along and see how we've transferred some of the camel onto this carder? So what we'll do is we'll take it off, scooting up with my left carder, and we'll draw it down again. Just slowly. There we go. And we've distributed that camel beautifully between the two carders. So we'll take this one up and we'll take the other one off. And now we can roll it into a nice little roll leg that will take up the camel. It's distributed through the fleece. And that's going to add some softness to this border Leicester. Not that it's soft or already, it, it is soft already, but it's going to add a little bit of luxury to that border Leicester. So we've got that roll lag that we took off our hand carders and it's a very different form of fiber to spin. Um, it's actually what we call a woolen processed fiber, nothing to do with the wool that's in the roll lag. Um, when we say woolen in hand spinning terms, it means that all the fibers are crisscrossed and um, 
there is air in the process that we um, draft from. So it's a little bit different when you spin a roll lag. You would join it in the same way, but you actually allow some of the twist to come into the roll lag. So see how the twist is coming down now past my fingers and thumb. And so yes, you're allowing the twist to go past your finger and thumb here. What that does is it captures air into your yarn. Your, your single will be a little more lumpy bumpy, but that will come out in the plying. Might just take that bit off. And you'll get a lot softer, more downier style of yarn. Have a look when we... Now, can you see the thickness of that yarn? It's quite thick. And a woolen yarn is processed slightly differently in the hot water that we use. And in an actual fact, it will become a little felted. Um, and it will become quite fluffy and tubular and you get lots of lovely softness and air. It's a very warm yarn to wear and um, fantastic for beanies and things like that because it gives you that extra warmth. So I'm just going to show you a very simple method of just helping your spinning of wool top. Um, you would be aware of the fact that this is um, a top preparation um, and uh, I've just laid it out in um, on, on a towel here because what I'm actually going to do is steam it and I have for many years popped it over a pot of boiling water um, and gently steamed it but it's this um, method has turned out to be actually very very quick because sometimes you just want to spin straight away and waiting for it to dry is a pain. So this is just um, wool top, Corridale wool top and all I'm going to do is to run an, a steam iron over the top of it. Now you'll see the change that happens and so I'm just making sure that my iron, yep it's nice and steamy. And I've got the ability to actually give it a bit of a surge. So we'll just start on this first part and run my iron over it. And you can already see how it is opening out. Anybody who's got curly hair will know the horror of going out on a rainy day or a damp day, this is exactly the same. All right, we'll just give the iron time to recover. You can see from the very first one that I did how much it has puffed out. And so basically what you've done is activated the crimp again. And the reason that it wasn't as buffy as this before um, it's because of the process of top making the wool gets quite hot and as it goes through the different processes the rollers the combs um, It stretches it out a bit, a bit a bit like when you Iron your clothing and you press out all the wrinkles well this um, wool top had had its wrinkles uh, pressed out of it and we make so many decisions about spinning based on the crimp that we observe in our fibre. And so doing this gives us a better idea, there we go, gives us a better idea of how we are going to then spin it. So that's the first part, then I'm just going to flip it. You can even see that it's a bit straighter on the underside because it's um, not had as much contact with the seam. And so once again, yep. There we 
we go. It's really coming alive. We'll just finish off this little part. You can see it's a bit flat there. And there we go. All ready for spinning. And I can tell you, it is dry enough to handle. It's just because wool tends to absorb a lot of moisture and really um, this, this is quite ready to spin. And it, you'll find that it's less slippy and now you can also observe the crimp and make some choices about how you're going to spin it. And so this is some blue face Lester that I have just basically steamed with the iron and just this one side and you can see the difference between this and this one so you might well have looked at this and said well you know it's very sort of silky smooth looking fiber and you would have made choices to spin based on that whereas when you steam it with the iron just and that was just um, a couple of seconds ago you can see that there is a lot of beautiful crimp in this and it is extremely soft and um, and bouncy and so you can then make a decision on what style of spinning you'll do based on the true nature of the fiber now I would do this process even if you purchased hand dyed top and it has been in a plait or it's been in a bag I would lay it out and I would steam it with the iron. You will be, even though it's gone through the whole process of being dyed and being submerged in water etc, just having been plaited or put in a bag it's just, uh, you'll be amazed at how much better it is when it's steamed like this. So this is a, a length of top that I've broken off the main um, piece and um, it's been steamed so it's nice and bouncy the crimp crimp has um, been reactivated and i'm just going to run my hands along it to see which way is the smoother way and it's actually this way um, it's nothing to do with the scales on the fiber it's everything to do with the way in which the lengths of fibre have been laid down as it's gone through the top making process. So this is the smoothest way and I'm going to spin it from that end with the smoothness coming towards me. Now I'm going to divide, I've only got a small piece of top, I like to work in small pieces. I'm going to split it by pushing my fingers up through the middle and tearing it down. And I'm going to split it once again like that. Okay, so now I've got a nice piece of top with which to work. So I take my end of the top and I like to have a tidy end of top. So I might even pull a little bit off to get some nice fibers on the end there. And I'm just going to lay them down onto my leader just as I did with the other process and then draft out and when you have drafted or split your top into lengths, you can actually just spin from the point. So if you notice, I'm just doing a short forward draw. So I'm not uh, doing big long lengths out, just short forward draw forward and opening up my hand here to allow the fibers to come through. I am always looking here as to what I'm going to pull out next. I might turn my top a little bit. Notice there's a little bit of a short bit there. I'll pull that off. It's amazing as you start to spin top, how fussy you become as to what will go into your single. So let's have a look at how this will look when we bend it back on itself and whether we're pleased with the result under tension allowing the twist to come in so oh there's a nice bit of spring in that even though it's a worsted spin and that would equate to about a templar yarn
So I'm very happy with that. Vishka is the star. Obviously, you <laughs> might not be able to see it, but my dog has decided to plonk herself right down here. <laughs> so this is the wool top that we steamed before. And uh, as you can see, it's really puffed out. So now we're going to, um, we're going to let you have a go at spinning it. So I tend to break it off into lengths like this, as, um, and we'll just then strip it. And what we're basically stripping it down to is the thickness of a lock of wool you know, or fleece, yeah. because it's just easier for us yeah. to handle it that way. So thinking once again that, you know, you're drafting out, sliding down, yeah. drafting out, sliding down, then you're just moving your hand back. This is like a continuous lock, really. Mm, yeah. You'll find it a little slippier than um, your greasy fleece because there's no lanolin in there to sort of act like a resist but um, just take it slowly and um, you've got a bit of a leader on that of um, well it's actually greasy um, fleece but it doesn't matter yeah so do you need the wheel and yeah, to it to you yeah great and have a go at that and see how you go same process of letting the fibers attach Oh, sorry, that was my fault. I beg your pardon. I just adjusted the, uh, the bobbin there, or the um, tension cord, because it was clattering. Yeah. It does feel quite different. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. So, just remembering the process, keeping your eye on what you're pinching out. And remembering that um, with your um, with your wool top, when you pinch and pull the fibres out, the tendency is for more fibres to come out mm. because there's um, they're, they're freer um, and they're not attached to each other in the same way that a greasy lock of wool fibres are. There you go, though you've got it already. Very nice. It's got a bit of a rattly bobbin on this <laughs> wheel, but that's okay. Now, uh, did you see how that yeah, slipped then? Really so sometimes the fibres can slip, um, and so it really is a case of um, even short forward drafts, as we call them. Mm. So short forward drafts will keep it under control more easily. There you go. How does that feel? Yeah, that's better. Oh! Yeah, see? <laughs> it, uh, uh, see, and so stop and pull pull it out. So uh, I've got a little bit of a break there. Yeah. Um, and what we can also do at this point is to just uh, fold it back on itself and roll it up. And let's see. Let's examine. So where you've spun finely, you've got good twist, and of, of course yeah. where you haven't. So what I would suggest is that you actually hold it in your lap a little longer. Yeah. Um, because the whirl is pretty good. We could go down to a finer one if you wanted to. But let's just try slowing the process of getting it on to your um, to the wheel. So we just slow your hands down and keep your feet at the same speed. There we go. You see, so when we start off with any sort of new fibre, we, we tend to be a little anxious. And so we tend to think we've got to work, we, we, we grasp onto the energy of that anxiousness and it tends to speed up our motions. Um, now, now you're going to get a lot better result. There's definitely a lot more twist. Yes. Oh, now you see how you're getting the corkscrews yeah. here? You're getting corkscrews. So what we're going to do is we're going to just increase your tension a little bit. 
let's see how that goes and that will assist in the relationship of it being taken onto the wheel oh, too strong is it i think that's too strong ah so if you let the twist come into your fiber yeah. at the back it's very hard yeah, it is. wool top is even more um we'll show you that even more yeah yeah how do i actually break so it? no you just um let it unravel so pinching and letting it unravel and if you just even unravel it with your fingers here we go so we'll unravel it and now you can draft it yeah so yeah. if you pinch here there we go you'll be fine now is tension okay on that now or is it a bit too strong um It's a new process, isn't it? Yeah. There's still a few ports to That's okay, it's, they're getting better. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you just up to a larger whirl, which sounds a bit strange, but we'll, we'll just see. Because you've slowed your hands down and you're getting more twist, we're just finding that nice balance. Yeah. Now, because you've got some corkscrews up here, what we're going to do, and here, we're just going to pull that out and let it just unravel itself. It's amazing how the fibre will still hang on. Yeah. And we can just slide our hands down that single and get rid of some of those corkscrews. And then the first few trebles that you do, we'll start you off on a new piece. The first few trebles that you do, you just let that whole thing go onto the yeah. bobbin. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Just bring your hand forward. There we go. That's better. we found the relationship yeah so we've got the it was just a case of adjusting the whirl um, for the pace that Ivy's hands are going and the treadling of her feet and now she's found that lovely relationship that is going to give her a nicely spun single and we'll test it in a minute by folding it back on itself your hands just down a little bit that's it and remember to keep your eye here yeah Whoa. and go right into the fiber to pull it out that's it that's it so try and you'll eventually get it so that your fiber it creates mm. a point and you spin off the point Your first time with wool top. <laughs> so now is it drafting out easily for you? Yeah. Great. It's going a lot better than it was before. Yeah. Because there is a little bit of an, a neck or um, uh, a smooth and a rough direction in wool top. And uh, if you find that it is um, drafting out or hard to draft out, just turn it the other way yeah. around. So we'll stop here and we'll pull it out and we'll double it back on itself and let's just have a look. That's it, good. Ah, so that's lovely. Okay, the twist won't go into the thick part. The thick part is quite woofy um, and twist will avoid thick parts if it can because there's more fibre for it to twist. Mm. Um, but um, when you're plying it under a bit of tension, that will be quite, that's, that's about a 10 ply, 12 ply yarn. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Well done. Thank you. Hmm.